Today I'm gonna to show you how to mount your backdrops in three different ways, and then at the end I'll show you how to combine two of them in order to do this. In today's video, you're gonna see all sorts of great stuff, including how to make this backdrop or how to set up two backdrops into a corner. But before we get started, I just wanted to ask you guys, if you're not subscribed, to go ahead and subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell, give me a thumbs up, all of that good stuff. And also, if you enjoy learning from me in these videos, you probably would enjoy learning from me at an in-person workshop, or you might enjoy learning from me on my exclusive members only platform called the Academy with John Gress. And there you will find information about in-person workshops. And at the Academy, you'll also find all sorts of exclusive content, including videos and previews of YouTube videos that are not posted yet. You can also sign up for mentoring sessions or subscriptions with mentoring sessions. And that way we can connect one-on-one -on -one every month and I can help you uh, through your journey and in coming in be into becoming a better photographer. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So the first method that we're gonna talk about today is what I like to call the corn on the cob method. And for those of you who aren't American, don't worry, I will explain in detail. This right here is a 20 inch or it would be a 50 centimeter uh, grip arm. And they also come in 40 inches or one meter, uh, but I don't think they're very good for this application. So the way that you would use this grip arm is to place it on a light stand. It could be any light stand. In particular, I'm using this antique Mullen Richardson uh, steel light stand. It's just because I like, uh, oops. Sometimes it ends up in my background, so I like to, uh, to use this particularly for my background stand. So you wanna use the side that is closest to the diameter of the top of your light stand. You just wanna slide it over on top. And then, hopefully I'll get it on there. <laughs> okay, once you have it on there, you always wanna keep this in mind. The weight or the rod needs to go to your right when you're looking at the handle. So if I tighten this down and then I put a lot of weight over here, it's gonna further tighten this grip arm. If I had this turned over the other direction and I put the weight over on this end, it should in theory work itself loose. Okay, there, it worked itself loose. Just, just believe me, that's how it usually works. Uh, it usually is easier to see. But you wanna keep this off to your right. And then you wanna get another light stand with another 20 inch grip arm coming back the other direction. And I'll show you guys how to use it. Okay, so I've got my two light stands with my two 20 inch grip arms and they're facing each other, so to speak. And now we're gonna go over why I call this the corn on the cob method. It's because when you're eating corn on the cob in the summertime, you often will stick in these little forks on the end and that's exactly what we're going to do with our backdrop. Now, these particular grip arms are made by Matthews. You can get them from Impact and Coupo and Avenger and I'm sure other brands as well. If we were using the 40 inch or one meter version, I think it would be too long and it's very hard to manipulate something that big all by yourself. And so I like to do it with the smaller ones. The other thing is I like having these rolling stands because I can do everything myself without an assistant usually. And what I would do is put it up at the correct height and then do this or what you're about to see on a ladder. You could do it without, uh, without rolling stands, uh, but it usually would, would help. So let me go ahead and grab our backdrop here. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to uh, stick it onto or over uh, this grip arm and I'll push the stand out of the way. Then I'll grab this one and slide it in here as well. And I'll pull the stand back in so we're not off the set. And then what you wanna do is just roll it down to the uh, area that you want it or the, you know, so it hits the floor. And then the next step would be to grab an A-clamp. I've got this one here that happens to be gigantic. I think it's uh, three inches. It doesn't have to be this big. A one inch will work just fine, but it's much easier for you to see in the video using this one. 
So what I wanna do is locate the side of the backdrop that's naturally going to be spinning because of the way the backdrop is, is hanging off of the tube. And right now, the backdrop is on the front side of the tube, so that means it's going to go this way. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and clip this on over on this side, right about here. And this way, now that I have it on here, when the gravity does its thing, it's going to push the clamp against the light stand and everything is going to work out perfectly well. So let's go ahead and move on now to our second method, which is probably the more traditional one that you're used to. If you search the internet for background stands, what you're normally gonna find is something that looks like two light stands with spikes coming out of the top, and then that's spanned by some sort of pipe that has a hole at each end and that then slides over the two spikes. I don't really like uh, the idea of having a dedicated background stand, and that's because I'll end up having two stands laying around that only have a specific purpose. I just wanna use any old kind of stand that I have uh, laying around. And so what I will do is I will just take two light stands and then I will span it using a pipe from the hardware store. And you can use PVC pipe, although it will be a little bit flexible. I do use this on location. I have a PVC pipe that I have uh, cut down and then I have it with some uh, joiners and then that way um, I can get out to um, uh, nine feet if I need to. But then in my studio, I have a dedicated 10 foot long, one inch pipe. And so the way that I will use it in my studio is to take this, and this is a super clamp, which essentially has a hole on this side that slides over the top of your light stand. And then this little uh, thing on the side just tightens it down so it can't come off. And then you just spin this big lever and that opens the jaws up or closes it down. And if you get it reasonably close, to the opening that you need in order to slide your pipe in, uh, that's just fine. And you go ahead and you do that at both ends of the pipe or both ends uh, on top of both light stands. So I'll go ahead and show you now with this one. So I'm just gonna slide it on, I'll lock it down, get my opening about right, that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and do it on this other side over here. I'll go ahead and stick it on. That looks about right there. Okay, I've cheated. I have my pipe right here on the floor. So I've got my 10 foot pipe. I'm just gonna go ahead and sit it into each uh, super clamp. This one needs to open up a little. And then that works out pretty well. Now the next thing I need to do is grab my backdrop and slide it onto the pipe. So forgive me, I'm gonna go mostly offset for a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my backdrop. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on at this end. And I'm sliding it onto the pipe ever so slowly here. And I'll just open this up a little, I mean open the width up a little. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, let's pretend that this light stand is up where we need it to be at the full height. Now you can just uh, go ahead and roll this down and uh, maybe we'll also pretend that I've rolled it down all the way as well. And then you just lock off the two ends onto the pipe and that should work out pretty well over here. That works out pretty good over here. Okay, now we'll just secure uh, this background onto the pipe using our A-clamp. And now it's secure. And now the great thing about this method, because my stands are on wheels, is I can move this around the studio if I need to. Uh, of course, most of the time you're not going to, but it is an option. And so I prefer this method over the traditional background stand method. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments and we'll move on to our next step. So our next method is this background rack system. And you can get them to have three slots or six slots or maybe even more. This particular one is made by Manfrotto. There are some very generic ones that are quite affordable on eBay. 
although I've never used them, so I can't exactly speak to their quality. This is a great solution if you're able to mount the brackets directly to your wall. That way, in the middle of a shoot, if you need to switch from one backdrop to another, you can do it very quickly just by pulling on these pulleys all by yourself. It takes a lot less effort and things can go a lot more quickly and you probably will be more inclined to switch the background. One of the things that I've heard from several photographers is that when they have basic sort of LinkedIn headshot clients, they will change the background and if it's a guy, maybe have them take off their tie or leave their tie on. And that way they've instantly created more possibilities for the client to choose from and then that client is more likely to purchase additional retouched images. So having a system like this can easily pay for itself. Also, if you're just lazy, it's great as well because you don't have to do uh, all the rigmarole that you have to do uh, with uh, the racks that we've looked at so far in this video. I have on here the three colors that I kind of use the most, and that is this light gray and blue backdrop, a dark green backdrop, and a very neutral gray backdrop. So let's go ahead now and I'll show you our next method, which will combine both the corn on the cob and the big pipe. Well, I bet you were probably wondering what we're about to do. I'm gonna mount these two backdrops into a corner or into a corner like this. Um, so one is gonna be on this side and the other one is gonna be directly behind me. Now these two backdrops in particular are double-sided. One side is ultramarine and the other side is brown. So on this one, as you see it's brown on this side, it's ultramarine on the other. And this one is uh, ultramarine, and then as you open it up, it becomes brown. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is that these two backdrops are exactly sort of the same, but they're mounted to the pipes or cardboard tubes in the opposite way. That's why you're seeing brown on the outside and turquoise or ultramarine on the outside on this one. And that's so that we can put them in exactly right uh, on a backdrop bar behind me and to my side so that they're touching in the corner. That might not make a lot of sense right now. I'm gonna go ahead and sort of give you guys a time lapse of me setting this up over the next 10 or so minutes. And then I'll come back and I'll recap and I'll show you why it works uh, the way that it works. So the first thing I have to figure out is which backdrop goes which direction. So this backdrop goes on my left. So, okay. It goes on my left and we're gonna do a turquoise corner. Okay, let's get started. Okay, this part is sort of key. I'm gonna put it on the other side of the backdrop and I need to get this coming over the top of that bar. And with that, we're basically done. Is it perfect? Well, there might be a little bit of a gap over here, and that happens sometimes, and that's okay. I could just use maybe an apple box on the back side of this backdrop to sort of push it over, or maybe I just need to push this side over a little bit, or maybe I need to push this side over a little bit. The key to doing this is to have your two backdrop bars overlap. And so I was able to use that uh, or do that by having the 20 inch grip arm on this side overlap the pipe that's running that way. 
And then I simply just set up the other grip arm on this side and then speared this backdrop and sort of pushed it over. Now, because the blue or ultramarine backdrop on that side is mounted to the backdrop tube and it's coming off this way, and this backdrop is coming off this way, going the other direction, um, this one is falling down and then this one, because it's coming over this direction, is butting up right against it. And that way the two can touch. If this backdrop was mounted the other direction and it was falling off going this way, I would have easily a three inch gap there and this setup just wouldn't work at all. And so that's the reason why you need to get those two backdrops sort of going those opposing ways. Anyway, guys, I hope that was all helpful. If you have any questions or comments, just leave it below and I will get back to you very soon. Thank you so much for your time. Stay safe and have a great day.